sometimes it amazes me about how people deal with what we call spiritual warfare. You know, this whole idea of Satan is on the one hand, you know, he's, oh, the devil made me do it. You know, people sometimes get off on that tangent where they make everything about their flesh about the devil, you know. Oh, God made me do it, you know. The God of this world, that is. Or, you come to judge. You come to judge. So they're fearful of God's judgment. So they cast all their sins on, you know, the enemy of their soul, Satan himself, you know. As though Satan being only an angel. Now, he may have been a big angel, but he's one angel. As though Satan himself has time to run around and find you. You know, you, yourself, dealing with you only and not the entire world that he controls. Now, it's true that Satan came to Jesus, but I think he was kind of looking for Jesus because he also caused, you know, at the time of Jesus' birth, all the children in his hometown to get killed and slaughtered up to three years old because he whispered a little bit instructions into Herod's ear, made Herod fear. Because there's certain things that angels, fallen or not, can do. They can give us messages. They can tell us things. If God allows them, they can do things. But God has to allow it. And there's some things that just can't happen anymore. And sometimes people like to create fantasies about angels. You know, there's even weird fantasy books out there now about fallen angels having intercourse with human beings and there's all kinds of weird ideas about the Nephilim coming, you know, and all kinds of speculations about this, that, and the other thing that they pulled from, originally, the Bible. You know, that now we're going to have giants and, you know, all these other weird experiences. Well, in the book of Revelation, when God releases some of these demons out of hell, you know, in the pit, yeah, there are going to be some pretty hair-raising experiences for those people that are around at that time. But now, quite frankly, it's like guerrilla warfare. You see, Satan has already been conquered, literally. Sure, he's the god of this world, and things are getting worse, and everything that has been held back for thousands of years since Jesus first died on the cross is slowly but surely you know, being allowed to happen more and more because the Holy Spirit is beginning to pull back, so to speak, his influence on the world. And wherever there has been Christian activity, you know, of some major sort, you know, like the center of Christianity, you know, going on, you know, then that's also where now you see a lot of satanic activity kind of like trying to destroy any witness that there was of there being righteousness and holiness, you know, and godliness. You know, those centers of Christian faith have one by one fallen in some ways to dominions and powers and principalities you know like originally when Jerusalem was like the center of Christian activity BAM got wiped out and then it became kind of like you know pretty demonic and to this day there's still quite a bit of evil influence in Jerusalem you go to Rome afterwards from Jerusalem and it was like the center of Christianity you know it was like wow it's magnificent in its influence on the world. And then, bam, the Roman Empire falls. And things get kind of weird, you know, and weird things start happening there. Sure enough, we get some pretty evil influences happening in the Roman Catholic Church, like papacy. Then Constantinople, you know, you see that as a center and a hub for a while of Christianity. And then suddenly, bam, it becomes ungodly and destroyed. Then you see over in Germany, when at one point in time we get Luther and we get all this renovated, you know, Christian theology, and we get the Bible and we get the Gutenberg, you know, presses, and we get all this wonderful center and hub of Christianity, and then bam, it becomes satanic and it becomes the actual manifestation, just like in the old days when Antiochus Epiphanes first went into Jerusalem and declared himself, you know, to be the Roman Emperor, you know, and slaughtered a pig. Well, the same thing, you know, happened kind of like in Germany, where Hitler, by the same spirit, was possessed at the end, you know, and kind of 
kind of manifested what the Antichrist would be like. And yet, Germany was the hub of Christianity at one time. Then you see, as that migrated to England, where England was like the center of, wow, such magnificent, wonderful, different denominations growing and causing, you know, the Magna Carta and different human rights and privileges to come about, including Congresses and, you know, ways of, of dealing with ourselves and our integrity and our honesty and our monarchy becoming more of a democracy as opposed to a monarchy. And you see that beginning to happen and Christianity growing in its way and its flavors that are offered in denominations. And such a wonderful thing as even the King James Bible coming about. And the center of Christianity being in England for a season. And then, bam, you look at England today and its ungodliness and its falling away from what God had intended. And yet, even afterwards, its bastard son, so to speak, America, you see, America as, in some ways, a great Christian influence in the world. A great light shining in the darkness. Even as the Statue of Liberty holds up the torch of freedom, we see God manifesting His grace and shedding His grace upon a very tiny, fragile, baby nation that's just been around 200 years. And yet, in as short a time as it was able to influence the world, it's also able to fall away from the world. Because, on the one hand, Babylon itself couldn't have portrayed more evil in the world than what we have done in our own way with democracy and technology. And at the same time, we have manifested Christianity in some ways. But have we fallen off of the throne of grace and rather been influenced by the demonic times that we live in? Many people talk about spiritual warfare. They have books out like Pigs in a Parlor and the Pentecostals go one way and the Charismatics go another way and the Roman Catholics go that way and the you know, Methodists and other, left, other people, Lutherans and them go another way. And some people say there is no devil. And some people say he's the brother of Jesus like the Mormons which are completely off the wall and not Christian. People make up a lot of things about spiritual warfare. I see it as guerrilla warfare, you see. Guerrilla warfare is the idea that you can't win the war, but you can harass constantly the occupying force. And we as Christians are the occupying force. We are the people who are holding it together. We have the world from destroying itself because we're Christian in our attitude, our actions, and our intentions. And even though those places have fallen to the enemy in some ways, there's always a remnant that has remained in the Roman Catholic Church, a remnant in Rome itself, a remnant in Jerusalem, a remnant in Germany, a remnant in America, a remnant wherever Christianity has risen to the top and fallen to the bottom. I see even in contemporary music how the Christian music industry has bounced around the world, you know, where at one time it was like, wow, where was the center of the hub, you know, of great Christian artists coming from, whether Southern Cal or Nashville or then Hill Songs or over in England, you know, you kind of watch these things and you go, hmm, it looks a lot like kind of what happened in Christian dogmas and doctrines and religion in the history of the church. Because if you look at the history of Christian music, you can see where a lot of the great hymns were at certain times. The great writers of Christian music were at certain times. And then the great way things have changed from men offering up praise out of their own voice to simple instruments to organs to great cathedrals to great stages to great crowds to great instruments to great manifestations of gifts of the spirit to great wonders and signs and spiritual warfare is going on because the whole idea of that spiritual warfare is a guerrilla warfare that's after your soul. You see, that's all Satan really can do. He can't kill you, and he can't destroy you. He can't ruin your life, but he can harass you in ways that you've never thought of before. He can cause you to lose some of your joy, some of your peace, some of your love. He can 
distract you by harassing you into focusing in on the wrong things. So that way, when you're trying to put out brush fires, you miss the other things that are happening. One of the things that was interesting about the Vietnam War was that at the time that it was being harassed by the Viet Cong constantly invading by way of every means available South Vietnam, the North Vietnamese also had a long-term plan in process. They knew that if they could harass, harry, and constantly keep worrying, so to speak, the occupying force, that eventually they would pull out. They would pull out because it was long distances from their supply. And the same thing is true about Satan in his warfare against us, the spiritual warfare. It's not a matter of him coming and confronting you directly. No, it's harassing you, worrying you, causing you to constantly be after him than doing the thing that God sent you to do. You see, God has a plan too, a long-term plan. Satan has a long-term plan also, and that's to frustrate God's plan, to cause God to be so disgusted with Christians and humanity that he would absolutely annihilate it and Satan would win. His accusation against the brethren, his accusing of Christianity of being not godly would be fulfilled in saying that grace could not accomplish what legalism never could and that there is no justification for his condemnation. And the reality of that trial of Satan coming and the condemnation that has already been determined for him and cast out of heaven is just because, you see, we may be harassed, we may be distracted, we may be compressed in on every side, but when you are, that's when you turn to God. That's when you look up and not around. That's when you quit trying to cast out demons or do something for God, but you ask God to intervene. The personal relationship you have with Jesus will always conquer any spiritual warfare that's out there. God did not send you out and say, I have called you to be a spiritual warrior. No. He said, I called you to come to me. You see, a little child, a little baby, isn't worried about spiritual warfare. A little child goes to the one who is greater than he is and just crawls up in his daddy's lap, gets in his lap and just sits there and enjoys the love that God pours out upon them. And God holds them protected and comforted. And it doesn't matter what happens all around the child as long as the child stays in his father's lap. Often people get carried away somehow in some way from being with God today. They like to go into doing something in their own strength rather than being something in God's will. God never made a man to become you know, Jesus. God said, I will create in you my son and my son will be in you and you will be in me and we will be one so that even if hell itself came against you, and all the powers of the demons on high, if you're in me and I'm in you, then they're coming against God. And nothing can afflict you if God is in you. So you see, it's really harassment to distract you from where you should be focusing in on. It's not about going out there to do something against some enemy or some demonic activity, because that's going to happen it will come upon the world in a greater degree and even more of a measure that you'll be able to see all around you. But that's just, again, the distractions from what you should be focusing your attention on. Because God wants you to come to Him and cry out. You see, there's a lot of songs that say that, cry out to Jesus. But when you're given opportunities to make a choice, of crying out to God or exercising your voice. Most of the time I find Christians will exercise their voice to go out and say, oh, demons or oh, Satan, be gone in the name of Jesus. And they'll cast out demons and they'll do all these miraculous signs and wonders supposedly in his name. And 
get carried away with it and get caught up in it, get all filled up with it, somehow get gone with it. And they're so busy fighting a guerrilla warfare, they don't realize the battle's already won. You know, God didn't say to put on the whole armor of God and then pull out your sword and start slashing and gashing. He said, after you put on the armor of God, stand. Because you'll be able to resist the wiles of the devil. You see, if you're standing still, you're not doing anything. You don't have to do anything. God takes care of it. You ask God, God, go get him. God does. You say, God, I will wait on the Lord and see what the Lord will do. I will trust in the Lord and see what God will do. I will let God be who He is and I will submit myself to His will so that I'm not doing what I want to do, which may be fighting and battling and doing all the things you want to do, but rather you'll be waiting on the Lord and doing what He wants you to do. Today, humorously and video by was challenged again, you know, by just the little harassing war that goes on at different times in my life. You know, the things that God wants me to enjoy, but the things that Satan wants me to employ myself to. My camera, you know, stopped working, and so I had to stop and check and see what was wrong with it and go through process of elimination to see why it's not working and to see if I need to download drivers or if the cable's not working or if the connections of the poles not working and all these little things. So I go through that, you know, because I was having a wonderful day in the Lord and you know, just serving him and rejoicing and enjoying the coolness of the morning as it was being made manifest to me by God, giving us a day of a break from all the hundred degree weather we've had. And I thought, boy Lord, it just doesn't get any better than this. And bam. As soon as I went to record, the camera wasn't working. I didn't think, you know, oh, Satan's attacking him or some demon or whatever. But rather, I just went okay and went about fixing it and going through the motions of trying to repair it. And as I did, you know, it turned out to be one simple thing after taking all the steps necessary to find out what it was. And then I went right back to doing what God called me to do. And you know, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, that's just like what Satan tries to do in my life. He's tried to distract me with, you know, sex, with drugs, with rock and roll, with now the internet gives us all this availability of getting into everything we want to see, everything we want to hear, everything we want to know. We can get our favorite soulful music that we used to get. Oh, let's get back into the goody oldies. The oldies but goodies that made us feel what? Guerrilla warfare. Spiritual warfare. We can get into looking at porno that nobody knows we're seeing. We can look at, oh, all those other things we never thought we could look at before. Spiritual warfare. Guerrilla warfare. You're being distracted. We can do things we never thought we could do before. We can spend all of our time online in taking time to be with God. Ah, spiritual warfare. Guerrilla tactics. Harass. Distract. Keep never at peace. You see, God is the God of being still. God is the God of peace. God is the God of love. God is love. God is peace, love, and joy. When you can take those three and apply it to what you're doing and say, yes, this causes peace. This causes love. This causes joy. Then you know you're in God's will. But you see, guerrilla warfare wants to get you away from peace into violent action or means. Guerrilla warfare wants to get you away from love and picking and choosing who you love so that as you start to go down that path of picking and choosing who to love and who not to love, then you suddenly create criteria and judgment that you don't have to love the Muslim or the child molester or the person who's really just messed up like all of us are from wrong actions and attitudes that, quite frankly, guerrilla warfare has caused them to become. You see, at some point in time, everyone has been spiritually harassed. 
everyone is a child of Satan to start with. Who we become is up to us. How we develop that is to love God who causes men to repent of sin. And if the Christian can be distracted from sharing the love of God, you know, that we love God and that's what we're focused on, then we're going to get into creating rules and regulations of what people need to do in order to be saved, in order to be one of the ooh, chosen. That's not what God's about. God's about love. God chose to give His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life. God chose to manifest one way to defeat the enemy. It's not about casting them out. That's easy. It's not about doing something that you know the Word of God says that is already done. What it's really about is being willing to lay down your life. Lay down your will. Lay down your soul. For the one who's made you whole. It's willing to accept Jesus. To let him live through you. To the entire world. That you would not love your life if you went to death. Because as long as you love your life more than all these other things that you place in front of what your life should be about, then you're not really doing what God said would be done in the name of His Son. You're fighting a spiritual battle that you're losing the war. And the guerrilla tactics have accomplished the purpose of taking you away from being still, being at peace, being in love, and being full of joy. kind of funny, but, you know, if you did nothing at all, absolutely nothing, like, you know, the expression says that for evil to flourish, good men, you know, need to do nothing, that's true, till the book of Revelation. Good men don't need to do anything, because they are light, and they shine in the darkness. Good men don't have to do because they influence just by the fact of their presence. God does everything. So don't let the world caught you, get you caught up in some kind of guerrilla warfare where you're acting like the enemy and using enemy tactics against the enemy. Because he already knows what those are and he can beat you at his, your own game because it's his distraction factor. But rather, if you're going to do spiritual warfare, if you really are. Just remember, God is a spirit. You are. You're born again of the spirit. But God is a spirit. He can better handle the things of the spirit than you can. Maybe it's time you, in your spiritual warfare, got out of his way and did it in his way. <laughs>